the cypherpunk movement essentially tries to, which is comprised of many crypto anarchists, yeah. is largely focused on people preserving people's um, property, broadly construed, and their privacy, oh. broadly construed, um, using uh, the internet and the wonderful um, mathematical uh, science of cr applied cryptography in order to preserve those rights. Got it. So privacy is one. Privacy is a very strong component of this. And owning your own, and, and, and sovereignty in a way, like... Um, you yeah. own what you own. People can't take it from you. Yeah, it's a very, I mean, um, anarchists tend to have a focus on, like, private rights for the yeah. individual um, and not uh, believing in large entities being able to, like, conscript you into war, for example, and things like yeah. that uh, against other folks. So it's an emphasis on, like, personal responsibility and private rights. What do you think the impact of cryptocurrency will be on war, the globe, dictatorships? And um, institutions like America and China. I like the irreverence of it. Um, I like that it basically it's a global exit. Um, a global exit. What does that mean? Well, like Balaji Srinivasan talks about this very eloquently, but essentially like with – you can – so historically um, – like when the Jews were being purged throughout all of Europe, you'd have to like basically carry your trade in your head, which is why you've got like a tradition of having doctors and attorneys and things like that. Right. Tools that are like here. up here. Can't be taken from you. Can't be taken from you. Um, when you see folks who are like fleeing war-torn areas and whatnot, you see them like trying to bundle all of their valuables so on and so forth um, because they can't keep their wealth in their head. Right. Um, with Best case, they can put some diamonds and, and hide them on their person. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a terrible situation, especially yeah. in like places like Syria right now. Yeah. Um, my, my good friend is a, from New York is like a North Korean refugee. Like when she left North Korea, she couldn't bring any possessions. And so she had to start a new elsewhere, wow. um, which is just a mortifying prospect, right? Sure. And um, I like the idea of like being able to keep like a code in your head um, that allows you to access like a global, your piece of a global network. So you remember your 30 keywords in order, yeah. and you can unlock your store anywhere. What is it for Bitcoin? Is it like 30 or 60 words or something? What is it? Well, I mean, it depends on what sort of solution you're using. Got um, it. So, like, certainly with my ledger, you know, I have a pin and then I've got, like, uh, a mnemonic. Um, so, wow. yeah, it's, like, different for everyone, obviously, um, depending upon how they store their, their um, Bitcoins and, and whatnot. But I like the idea of something that you can access globally without mm -hmm. having to tap into... Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Like, if I put all of my, or I put 90% of my net worth into a store somewhere across all the 25 different leading cryptos yeah. and coins or whatever, hopefully it balances out over time or keeps up with inflation. You know, if any one of them goes out, it's 4% of your holdings. But then you can literally say the 20 words that you have in your secret icebox and unload it anywhere. Yeah, no, it's a very powerful prop prospect. You used um, to bury your diamonds. Yes. Pirates used to just bury... If it was back to pirates, pirates would not have to carry their gold and bury it on beaches. Right. <laughs> um, uh, though, yeah, there would be some other complications. In any case... Um, so some men just want to watch the world burn does not apply to you. You actually want to see people be more free. Um, yeah, I'm a big advocate of human freedom, broadly construed. <laughs>